Chapter 5. Try Faith in Action. Over the stage of the Goodman Theater in Chicago are the words, You yourselves must set the flame to the faggot you have brought. That might well serve as a motto for every truth student in the land. The trouble with most of us is that we do not practice what we know. Do you remember the story of the mother who said she was glad she had two sons, one a minister and the other a doctor, so that one could preach and the other practice? St. James said, Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. Perhaps we have been substituting knowing for feeling, hearing for doing. Under the barrage of verbal metaphysics, we tend to be mostly ears. We are like the pious Buddhist that J. Wallace Hamilton tells about. The Buddhist died and went to heaven and was taken on a tour of his new home. Quanon, the goddess of mercy, who was his guide, showed his treasure. There was a brilliant mansion which held gold and precious stones to dazzle the eyes with their luster, another mansion from which angel songs filled the air, a lovely garden of lotus flowers. It was all beautiful and satisfying, for it was exactly as he had pictured heaven, until they came to a room that looked like a merchant shop. Lining the walls were shelves of which were piled and labeled what might have been dried mushrooms. On closer examination, the Buddha saw that they were actually human ears. You see, explained the goddess, these are the ears of the people who on earth went diligently to serve us, listened with pleasure to the teaching of the gods, and did nothing about what they heard. After death, they went elsewhere, but their ears were saved. Only their faithful ears reached heaven. The story fits in with St. Paul's declaration that faith without works is dead. Outlining an objective for action in life is all too easy for most of us, but without the persistent action of faith and practice to back it up, it remains in the mental sphere and nothing comes of it. I like the story Richard Lynch tells of a man who built himself a cottage on the shore of a lake. Someone liked it and wanted to buy it. The builder sold it and built himself another. The same thing happened again. He built another and another, and the demand for his cottage increased until quite a group had been built and sold. Someone suggested that a hotel was needed to complete the colony. One day the original builder was seen at work out in the cleared space. When curious people asked what he was doing, he answered that he was erecting a chimney for a hotel that he would build around it when he got the money. Needless to say, the hotel was built. By his action he set flame to the faggots of his plan. Working out a vision, staking your life on the outcome of your faith, blazing a trail, disregarding appearances, doing the impossible, being true to something beyond yourself. These are the evidence of faith. The basic factor in the successful application of divine law is not the number of books you read, the number of classes you take, nor the number of lectures you hear. It is your faith. William James, the great psychologist, said, in any project, the one important factor is your belief. Without belief, there can be no demonstration. That statement is basic. The idea, the mental equivalent of that which you desire, exists first in the mind. Then the acceptance of the idea by the consciousness gives it power to clothe itself and form through your faith. God gave man mastery and dominion, but man has lost his perspective and reversed his power. Believing that the world is the positive factor and he the negative, he has subjected himself to circumstance and conditions, to the opinions and the judgment of humanity. Only as he practices faith in good does he find that he is the positive being, and that the world is increasingly subject to his world. Only then does he prove the faith in God overcomes every difficulty. Faith is not a function of any particular mental faculty. It is, rather, the action of the entire consciousness. It is desiring and knowing that your word will be heard, that it will be acted upon, and that will take form. It is your conviction that you have power to make a demand on the universe that will be honored, to believe it, to have it, St. Paul said, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the hope and the result, the vision and the form, seat time and harvest, prayer and answer, wish and fulfillment, synchronizing thought, imagination, desire, feeling, and will with faith produces action. The law of faith is at all times working for or against you. Would you then deliberately choose to have faith in evil, in weakness, in sickness, and in poverty, when by the same deliberate choice you can have faith in good, strength, health, and plenty? It is as true that performance generates faith as that idleness generates doubt. Why, then, do you sit around bemoaning your fate, looking only toward the obvious and complaining about conditions and lack of opportunities? Yes, I know, you have probably attempted to meet your problems with push-button prayers, but now is the time to try something else. For hopes and wishes, substitute faith to works. Just as the muscle of your body requires exercise, your faith must be quickened within you. 
It must be developed through practice so that it will register an accomplishment. It must be turned from a possibility into a potentiality. It must be raised from a firecracker to an atomic bomb. To increase our faith, says Craig Carter, we should treat ourselves to know that truth, even now, is expressing in, through, and for us, and that we can count upon it. If we say this sentence aloud, a fact in which we believe, we have given ourselves a treatment for faith. That is the way it works. It is that simple. The simplest form of metaphysical treatment is to say aloud, in your own words, the divine truth, as best we understand it, about the condition being treated. Such a statement constitutes a demand upon law for the demonstration of the truth stated. There are many ways of cultivating faith, but the simplest way is to affirm it, to declare that you have it. The shortest affirmation to accomplish this is probably this statement, I have faith in God. Good. My faith overcomes every difficulty. Hold this statement in your mind until it forms in you a consciousness of itself. But I have no faith, you say. That doesn't make any difference. Act as though you had. As Shakespeare said, assume a virtue if you have it not. Affirm faith and keep affirming it until you feel it. Give out faith to others and faith will come back to you. Faith is contagious. Get close to those who have it. Seize every opportunity to exercise your faith. Keep telling yourself that you have faith and remember that all action takes place within you. Are you determined to get rid of all the inferior, weak, negative, and defeatist thoughts in your subconscious mind, and to build a sustaining consciousness of the presence of God? Then begin to act at this moment. We don't get more faith by merely wishing we had more. We get it by expressing what we have in daily action. Someone has said that faith in action is the concentration of all one's mental and spiritual power upon the reality of God's perfection to such a degree that all other thoughts are blotted out of mind. They no longer exist. When you exercise your faith in God, you are knowing nothing but the presence and power of God in every condition, difficulty, circumstance, and situation. You are making your belief so strong, so all-important, so all-absorbing, so all-inclusive that the mental substance in your difficulty is dissolved, and the problem for the moment drops out of your thought. If you have been in the habit of thinking negatively about cir circumstances and conditions, persons and things, start now to think in terms of faith. It isn't going to be easy at first if you have been accepting defeat and frustration for so long that it has become a habit, if you have come to feel that you have no faith left. But the old mistakes have nothing to do with the new program of action. Your faith is there waiting to be put to work. Don't go around telling people that you wish you had so-and-so's faith. You do not want anybody else's faith. You want your own. God made you to fill important places to do big things. It doesn't make any difference how far down the ladder of the moment you may seem or how hopeless your situation seems. If you will put your faith to work, you can climb to the top with words, My faith overcomes every difficulty. In reality, there is no formula for faith, but there are techniques which can make your own. Remember four things as you put your desire to increase your faith to work. 1. There is a universal law that operates upon faith. 2. Like the laws of electricity and gravity, it is not only always present, but it is always instantly responsive to your call. 3. It does for you only what it can do through you. 4. Its action is always commensurate with the degree of your belief. When Jesus touched the eyes of the two blind men and healed them, he said, According to your faith be it done unto you. He not only announced the nature of faith, but described the way in which it works. On another occasion he said, as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. What did he mean? He was saying that there is a mighty propelling law in the universe that operates with and through and upon your faith, and that it is immediate and invincible. Consider the words, as thou hast believed. The action of the law is always limited by your belief. If you hold up a large measure to the universe, you have a large return. If you hold up a small measure, you have a meager return. The size of the measure, or the mental equivalent, is always determined by you. Prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, and there shall not be room enough to receive it. Have you a tough problem to solve, or a seemingly impassable barrier to cross? Then bring to bear upon it the power of an indomitable, invincible faith in the law of good. Instead of thinking negatively about the problem, think in the positive term of accomplishment, of victory, of completion, of success. Keep your trolley on the wire. Keep God in the forefront of consciousness and the creative force flowing through you, and the problem will be solved, the barrier crossed or eliminated. 
Have you come to the end of your rope? Then tie a knot in it and hang on. Right where you are at this moment is the answer to your smallest or your greatest need, the fulfillment of your every desire. Dare to act on the magic of these words. My faith in God overcomes every difficulty. Roll them around in your mind. Say them over and over again. Say them out loud. Say them until they set up a suction in your mind. Say them until your whole consciousness accepts them, and they become a living, vitalizing power in your life. My faith in God overcomes every difficulty. These seven words are literally packed with a vital, dynamic, creative power. Think about them. Meditate upon them. Dwell upon them until they sink into your subconscious mind. Act upon them consciously until they become automatic in your life. Know with all your heart, mind, strength, and soul that the truth they carry has the power to transform your world, the authority to banish every difficulty, the capacity to meet every need.